Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Brian Crombie Hour on Canada One TV. So there's a gentleman that I want to introduce you to tonight who's I think one of the most impressive, involved activist uh, individuals in all of Mississauga. His name is Imran Hassan and uh, I've described him as a community activist. He's an entrepreneur. He uh, runs a business, a successful business in Streetsville. He is uh, chairman of uh, Peel Crime Stoppers. He's uh, an organizer of uh, a big Christmas uh, Breakfast that raises money for the food bank. Uh, he's uh, on the Mississauga Arts Council uh, board. The guy's been involved in a million different things, and uh, he's run for city council twice, unsuccessfully so far. Uh, but he's the type of person that number one, I think, is going to make a big difference in Mississauga um, and Ontario um, in the future. But also, I think he's a great example of someone who um, who wants to make a difference and wants to get involved and uh, has made friends and has made. Uh, an impact on his uh, community. So Imran Hassan, welcome to our show. Good evening, Brian. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. So, you know, Crime Stoppers, um, Food Bank, Mrs. Arts Council, how many more? Well, currently this is what I'm doing. Uh, I've uh, served in various capacities um, in the past. Um, um, well, most recently uh, the, the Mississauga uh, Board of Trade. I was uh, former chair of the International Trade Committee and prior to that the uh, former chair of the Growth and Power Committee. Uh, just Growth and Power? It was really focused on entrepreneurs and yep. it was really something that uh, I enjoyed doing uh, and it was a natural fit. Um, the uh, President and CEO found that uh, you know it uh, was uh, something that uh, I, I could uh, really gravitate towards and I was able to reach out to many local entrepreneurs and tell their story about how they took a concept and made it into a success and uh, made many many friends that way and uh, really helped raise the profile for the Board of Trade and uh, increase their membership. Fantastic and your, uh, your local business is what? Uh, uh, the business that uh, uh, that I have is yeah. in the telecom sector. Um, we are in the manufacturing of uh, infrastructure hardware. It's not very sexy, but uh, it's all the uh, behind the scenes uh, cabling and uh, connectivity that powers all your cameras and your uh, telephones and your computers. Um, we've been in uh, Mississauga Streetsville as a, as a business for over 30 years. Um, and we uh, uh, have been uh, established as a business since 1983. Really? And, and why did you, you know, after establishing such a successful business and running such a successful business, why don't you get so involved in the community? Well, really, Brian, that's um, uh, a value that my father instilled in me. And, uh, you know, he, he really um, is uh, my hero and, uh, and leads by example. Um, you know, he, uh, his story started uh, when he left India um, and uh, migrated to Pakistan. And then from Pakistan, he came to the uh, UK, and then from the UK, um, he found an opportunity to come to Canada. And as a pioneer, um, he overcame many, many um, uh, hurdles and barriers uh, to success. Um, but the one thing that he, uh, he, he realized very quickly is, um, you know, if you believe in something, just do it. And, um, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, he, his, his vision and mission to come to Canada was to build a better opportunity, not only for, um, you know, his, uh, his self and his family, but also to, uh, you know, give back to the community. And so uh, it's been instilled in me from day one. India to Pakistan to Britain to Canada. You got it. That's quite a route. Well, I mean, it was uh, not really entirely by his choice. Um, you know, uh, when uh, you know uh, India had a had a partition uh, and created Pakistan, so he was forced to migrate to Pakistan. Um, he saw an opportunity to go to the UK. He was uh, an engineer and wanted to create something. Uh, he went to the UK, um, started a small business, um, had a had a death in the family, had to go back to Pakistan and settle, uh, you know, family affairs, and then saw an opportunity to. Uh, uh, come to Canada because there was a job posting for an engineer and uh, he took the leap of faith and uh, ended up in Canada in 1973 and the rest is history. Fantastic. And uh, you, were you born in uh, Britain then? I was actually, I was, I was probably being carried around by mom uh, in that time, but I was born in uh, Karachi, Pakistan, okay. and, uh, and then uh, came to Canada in 1973. So, you know, been here almost 50 years. 
Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, and you decided to run for politics. Why did you decide to run for politics? Well, back to you know uh, um, just service. You know, giving back to the community um, and um, and uh, and wanting to make a difference and seeing you know so many opportunities and so many gaps. Uh, you know, in our in our. Uh, in our local neighborhoods and in our local communities, um, having having children, being uh, you know married, uh, you, you realize there's so many priorities. And uh, when you're so um, you know focused on business only, uh, you sometimes tend to have the blinders on. Right. And uh, and so uh, when you remove the blinders and you take a you know you take a look, uh, you do a 360 scan, you realize there's so many opportunities to uh, help raise the prof uh, profile for the community and help make a difference in the lives of other people. Um, and and uh, you know the uh, the service um, you know back in the community through volunteering is just one small way of doing that. Right now you're up against an individual that's uh, pretty established, uh, well known in the community. That must have been a challenge for you. You know, it, it we went into the campaign with the um, uh, with, with really the focus to learn, right? Yeah. To uh, to 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 understand how a campaign works, um, and uh, and and boy, we learned a lot. And uh, it was a great experience, um, and, and and really something I encourage uh, people to uh, really consider if they're if they're passionate about it, if they're determined, if they're if they're committed, because it's a lot of work. Was it a good experience or a bad one? It was a fantastic experience. I mean, uh, you walk away learning so much, meeting so many people, making so many friends, um, and, and really understanding the local issues. I mean, we think we know what's going on in our neighborhoods and in our communities, but uh, you really don't know until you knock on someone's door and you ask them, like, you know, what what is it in your neighborhood? in your community that really uh, keeps you up at night and people share those uh, ideas and their thoughts and their feelings with you and you know you gather all that and it really gives you a better perspective. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize the kind of effort that goes into running for politics. Uh, so how many days were you out knocking on doors? Well every day and we started so early I mean uh, unofficially and then officially uh, you know you can do unofficial campaigning by just uh, going out and helping uh, you know your, your your neighbors and friends uh, uh, in, in, in some of their uh, uh, you know local uh, activities whether it's through sports or through uh, community uh, as, you know uh, gatherings uh, but um, yeah the real the real campaigning starts when you you know are, are given the green light and you uh, you know you you and put up, drops and away you go. You've got it. You've got your postcards and you've got your uh, literature and you've got your website. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of planning and a lot of work that goes into it and then a lot of follow up. Any really bad experiences? Like, did you get bit by a dog or get a door slammed in your face? Or? <laughs> well, door slamming in the face, I think, is part of the course. Uh, that's something that happens. And I think if, uh, you know, uh, if you can't if you can't handle that, then I'd suggest you stay home and not bother, uh, you know, campaigning. But uh, there's a lot to learn in, uh, in a door being slammed in your face. Um, I often look at it as, hey, listen, you're, ha you're having a bad day, I'll come back, right? Uh, we'll try again. What and was the funniest experience that happened on the camping trail? Uh, well, okay, interesting experience. I'm uh, down in Streetsville. Um, uh, I knock on a door, and, uh, and I'm talking to the uh, lady of the house, and she says, I really like what you stand for, and I'd like to have you put a lawn sign up there. On my uh, on my property, I said, "Okay, great." So put the lawn sign up. Everything looks great. I drive away. Next thing you know, there's a gentleman who comes and he's dismantling my sign. So I run back over to the uh, I run back over to the uh, to the uh, to the home, and I say, "Excuse me, sir, but what are you doing?" He says, "Well, who put this lawn sign here?" I said, "Well, I did." He says, "I didn't give you permission to do that." I said. I know you didn't, but that lady over there did. <laughs> he looks at the door, and it was his wife, and she said, "Put the lawn sign back." So there he was. So he put it back. <laughs> he put it back. <laughs> so I got to tell you, I was uh, campaigning with David Peterson when he was a uh, running for a local MPP in London, and um, we went up to this one door, and uh, this uh, lady of the house came to the door. She was wearing a house coat, and she, David. And she like gives him a big hug, but the house coat falls apart, and she's completely nude. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that was a little bit of a shocker. Yeah, could be embarrassing for both parties. It was a, a little bit embarrassing, but it was kind of fun that uh, you know these things happen when you're on the campaign. That's track. right. That's right. So, are you going to run again? You know, if if there's a uh, if there's an opportunity, if uh, if there's support from the community, if um, you know all the um, you know sort of. Uh, uh, signals line up, then uh, I'm, I'm willing to take a, another another calculated risk. Um, at the end of the day, it, uh, it's not my decision alone. Uh, obviously, as some of your past guests have uh, indicated, you got to get your first vote from uh, your spouse. I have two kids who are quite vocal as well and uh, very supportive, so I'd have to gain their uh, confidence as well. And then after that, uh, get blessings from mom and dad, and then uh, you know we will take it from there. Awesome. Well, I uh, I wish you the best. If people are interested in you and want to follow you on Twitter or 
Instagram or something like that. Uh, how do they do that? Well, you can go to my website, imranhassan.ca, and uh, all the uh, social media handles and details are there. Um, and uh, of course, uh, my, my number is visible, and uh, I'm, I'm out in the community and I'm accessible. So you can I gotta give me a tell call. you, Imran Hassan is out in the community and very visible. Uh, I know because I see him everywhere I go. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more with Imran Hassan in a minute. And I'm going to ask him a little bit more about some of these organizations that he's a part of. And then I'm going to ask him about some of the local issues that, uh, that he's, uh, he's passionate about. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. It's a real pleasure and honor of mine tonight to uh, introduce you to Imran Hassan. If you haven't met this guy, he's a he's a mover within Mississauga, um, and uh, he's I think going to make a big impact on uh, Mississauga. He's uh, one of the most involved people that I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting uh, in a whole bunch of different organizations. So let's talk about some of them if we could. So, Chairman of Peel Crime Stoppers, what is uh, Peel Crime Stoppers? Well, you know, many people will know about the Peel Crime Stoppers uh, number and remember it as a, as, as a, as a, as a young person, uh, 1-800-222-TIPS, uh, that's 8477, and uh, it's an anonymous tip line uh, for concerned citizens in the community who want to uh, report suspicious activities or criminal activities that are happening in their neighborhoods so that that information can be disseminated uh, through Crime Stoppers anonymously. Uh, you never have to give your name or uh, phone number. Um, and uh, that information is then disseminated through the different law enforcement agencies depending on where the activity is occurring. Right. And those tips are used uh, by law enforcement agencies to help prevent crime as well as solve crime. So it's a very important tool for law enforcement. And why did you decide that was one of the organizations you want to get involved in? Well, uh, clearly, um, you know, public safety and uh, neighborhood security are uh, our top priorities for and should be top priorities for every uh, concerned citizen living in their uh, communities and um, and and really it was a bit of a it was a bit of a um, you know story uh, background um, I uh, I serve on another uh, committee uh, for a security uh, association and um, every year we were, we were holding a hockey tournament as a fundraiser for uh, different charities and uh, we would uh, host for uh, Toronto charities and being a peel boy from Mississauga I, uh, I challenged our chair and I said, uh, you know, it'd be great if we moved the charity uh, or the tournament to appeal and um, selected appeal charity. And they said, oh, I can't see any reason why we shouldn't do that. Who'd you have in mind? And I said, well, you know, out of the two choices, I think Peel Crime Stoppers would be a good one. And uh, they said, okay, why don't you reach out to the charity and find out, which I did. Um, we organized a fundraiser. Uh, $13,000 was raised uh, over a few hours at a, at a hockey tournament. And uh, once we handed the check over, they said, who are you? And uh, and it all kind of started from there. And now your chair, what does the chair have to do? Oh, geez, there's a lot of strategic planning that's going on, um, uh, a lot of community outreach uh, that has to happen, a lot of uh, event coordination and planning that happens. But it's not a one-person uh, show by any means. We uh, we have a, a board of uh, you know 11 uh, members who. Uh, work uh, diligently and passionately uh, to support that mission and vision and uh, you know th this th this couldn't be possible without that collective uh, 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 contribution right. from the diverse members that we have uh, in our in our community and on our board and then you go from Creel Peel Crime Stoppers to the Mississauga Arts Council why the Arts Council well you know growing up as a little boy um, I was uh, I wasn't privileged um, I always wanted to play an instrument but it was frowned upon uh, by certain uh, societies. And, um, 
and, and in, in our household, it wasn't something that, you know, I really uh, was encouraged to do. I wanted to play um, an instrument, but we really didn't have the means either. Yeah. And so it was that in the back of my mind that always, you know, reminded me that, geez, there's a lot of kids out there that really want to play an instrument, would like to get involved in the arts, but, you know, they just don't have the means. And so, you know, my advocating uh, on the Mississauga Arts Council is really about, you education know, for kids. education and, and, and really making uh, music and arts accessible for the vulnerable in our community, those who are, you know, not privileged. Right. So okay. it, it, was a, it was, you know, sort of a natural decision. And then the other thing that you're doing right now is organizing a big uh, Santa Claus Christmas uh, yes. breakfast for the uh, food bank, for the Eden, uh, Eden for Change uh, food bank. Yes. Um, and it's coming up on what, December the 4th? Saturday, December the 4th, uh, between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. We have a drive-through uh, format. Um, and just the background to that, uh, Eden Food for Change is a local food bank in Mississauga. Um, what's unique about Eden Food for Change is that uh, it not only is a food pantry, but also has a learning kitchen that teaches uh, people how to prepare fresh and nutritious meals so that they can serve their families. But it also provides transferable skills so that those people who are um, members of the food bank uh, can take that skill and go out into the workforce really? and eventually get off the food bank. Makes sense. And uh, you've been doing this for four years? So the uh, annual, fourth annual, uh, Streetsville Christmas Breakfast uh, will happen on Saturday, December the 4th, between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. And um, at the Mississauga Convention. At the Mississauga Convention. Mary Road, and there's both uh, in, in uh, the dining, uh, in house dining, as well as the drive through. And uh, it's 25 bucks, and kids eat free. That's, and that's our motto, kids eat free, and we really feel passionate about that, Brian, because can you imagine, uh, and this has happened, uh, we had a van uh, uh, full of uh, uh, kids come through with their, with their, their single mom uh, last year, and uh, it was really convincing for us that we're on the right track. When, when a single mom can make a $25 donation and feed five people. I mean, you couldn't do that at a local, you know, coffee shop. But this is for everyone, not just people that are going to the food bank. This is for everyone to come and uh, this, have the breakfast. That's right. And uh, and donate twenty five bucks. It's a fundraiser. Um, I'll tell you, last year, uh, in three hours, we served uh, 650 meals. Really? That was 200 cars they came through. And that was made possible because of our partnership with uh, Peel Regional Police, who were managing the uh, road safety uh, and greeting all, of our, uh, greeting all of our guests as they came through. Uh, we had all of our community uh, partners uh, in the parking lot as a uh, welcome wagon, uh, wishing everyone Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Uh, we had Santa Claus present, of course. We had uh, Hazel McCallion. Uh, we had uh, so many. Uh, we had Paul Henderson, the legendary hockey player. We had Nav Batia handing out basketballs, a super fan. Um, just, you know, people who really have shared uh, uh, values and, and, and really understand the spirit of giving. Uh, you don't have to celebrate Christmas to come to this Christmas breakfast fundraiser. You have to really just want to help give a hand up to the community in need. So you've been incredibly involved in the community, and we've talked about Peel Crime Stoppers, we've talked about the Board of Trade, we've talked about uh, Arts Council, we've talked about uh, food banks, um, and now you're going to run uh, potentially for politics again. Now, what do you think the big issues are in, uh, in either Streetsville or in Mississauga? That's an excellent question, Brian, and uh, I'm not going to say it's an easy one. Uh, but two of the areas that I'm very passionate about and I feel uh, very uh, concerned about are uh, food insecurity, um, public safety, and, um, and, and neighborhood security, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we need, we need to help build safer and stronger communities. And how do we do that, right? We help, uh, you know, give a hand up to the community in need to ensure that there are people that don't go without. Uh, but also to uh, build build that safety net within your own neighborhood. Get to know your neighbor, yeah. and, uh, and 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 help. I mean, law uh, law enforcement agencies uh, like Peel Regional Police and locally OPP. Uh, um, you know, th they're, it's not their role alone to protect us. It's really a community effort, and we can do that. And we can do that by leveraging uh, services like uh, um, uh, Peel Crime Stoppers and getting to know your neighbors and organizing events that help bring communities together. Because really, at the end of the day, Brian, you're not going to have strangers come into neighborhoods when you know people know their neighbors. They'll only come to the neighborhoods that are vulnerable, those who they know are susceptible uh, because people aren't connected. And right. so my mission is to connect people. So connect people. Connect people. Um, food security, how do you address that? Well, listen, um, you know, as I said, the, the food bank uh, is not just a pantry. Eden Food for Change yeah. uh, provides uh, education, right? 
provides awareness, uh, teaches skills. And I think that's important that, you know, the old adage comes to mind, Brian, uh, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime. Yeah. So to us, it's all about people how to cook, that's cook it. healthy meals, help them get off the food bank, because right. that is ultimately the end goal. Okay. What else uh, do you think Mississauga needs to do to, uh, to be a successful place to, to live? Well, listen, um, Mississauga is such a diverse community. There's so many 57 cultures. Fifty-seven percent of uh, people in Mississauga have lived in Canada for less than ten years. Absolutely. So we're we're a, t a city of immigrants. Uh, um, you know, more than half of us are a city of immigrants. One of the most diverse, if not the most diverse, uh, community in Canada. That's interesting because our diversity is diverse. Uh, if you go to uh, uh, Brampton or Markham, for an example, their diversity is very concentrated in in you know one or two ethnic groups. Our diversity is very diverse. So it we're, really is. We're a diverse, diverse community. Absolutely, and uh, and I think that's uh, that needs to be reflected more at the local level of government. Uh, we see that at the federal and provincial levels, uh, but I really think there's an opportunity, Brian, for uh, contributing members of our uh, society to step forward, put their name on the ballot, and help uh, you know serve their communities and uh, and 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 really um, help make a difference. Well, I think you would make a huge difference on uh, city council, and so I encourage you to uh, to run. You say your father's your hero. He is. And, uh, and he had this uh, you know, route to go from India to Pakistan, I guess, during partition, um, and then, uh, and then um, to Britain, um, and then to Canada. And I guess it sounds like he towed his family along on some of those trips uh, with him, um, then established a successful business uh, here in Streetsville and, and has uh, grown it. Uh, if you asked him if you should go for your dream, if you asked him if you should put your name out there and, and try to become a, a city councillor, make a difference in your community what would he say well dad's not only my hero but my biggest fan <laughs> so it's uh you know we just have to give him the nod to say we're ready and he'll get uh, you know the wooden stakes out he'll get this you'll get the lawn signs out and he'll start uh, zip tying them and hammering them into ground he's just he's ever ready he's 83 years young brian uh but uh you know still very much active uh, not so much in the business but more really in the in the family and in the community and uh he couldn't uh, yeah he he's he's very anxious and couldn't wait uh, for uh, you know for that uh, for that nod i hope i get to see your name on the ballot good luck thank you again brian uh, Imran Hussain, who is a huge community activist in uh, mississauga we've heard some of the things he's uh, involved in chair of uh, Peel Crime Stoppers on the Mississauga Arts Council board and, and running this big uh, Christmas uh, fundraising breakfast for, uh, for Eden, uh, Eden Food for Change, uh, the food bank uh, in uh, northwestern Mississauga. But more importantly than all that, uh, he uh, is an example of, uh, of someone who uh, you know, has come to Mississauga, uh, isn't born in uh, Mississauga, Canada, uh, has established a great business, has got involved in the community and now wants to, uh, to be an elected representative and put his name forward to run for city council. And uh, I think it's a great example of uh, the type of people that we need uh, in, in our political, uh, um, political jurisdictions, our political uh, spaces, and, uh, and he's got an incredible resume, he's got incredible experience, he's got incredible connections, and it's an inspiration to me that uh, someone like this would want to uh, play that role, but I think it's also an example to all of you uh, that more than just him, can play this role. We all can have that kind of role, whether it's in charitable organizations in our community or in elected office. Thanks, Imran. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate that. Stay safe. Good night, everybody.